This is James Helder for IFL TV in association with Macklin's Jim Marbella. I'm in Central London today for the press conference of Derek Chisora vs Tyson Fury 2. With me I've got Queensbridge's very own Francis Warren. What's happening, Fran? You alright? Hey there, James. You good? I'm alright. I'm alright. Good man. Bit unexpected though with the press conference. Did, did you know Tyson was going to come in like that? No. I've got him a nice bit of looking masking tape as well. <laughs> a little bit tatty really. Yeah, yeah. You got, you a bit got of an point. unexpected one, but this is it. I mean, a bit of a shame, really, that he didn't, didn't fancy having a chat today. Um, I don't know if Kogan managed to get much out of him apart from getting to take his clothes off. <laughs> um, I thought they only did that in private. Listen, it is what it is, as Kogan would say. Yeah. Do you think with Tyson Fury running the risk or being fine, he, he was trying to run in the risk of potentially maybe the fight not happening if he said too much or got into an altercation? Maybe. I just, I, you know, I think, I think we, we would all just have preferred to have. Uh, to what Tyson thinks about the fight and what you know about yeah. how preparations are going to go, where he's going to be training, perhaps who he's going to be sparring, and all the things that fight fans want to hear about. That's that's what press conferences are for: try and sell the fight, not to talk about what the board are doing and what the board aren't doing. So it must be a nightmare from you lot's point of view because you're trying to sell the fight as 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 you are, and then um, you've got a fight without, that you know, comes up and doesn't say much. Tyson obviously got his reasons for doing it, and you know if he wants to voice his frustration at the situation he's had with the board, then fair enough, and this is a decent platform for him for him to do it. But from your right, from our point of view, it's a bit, you know, it's it's quite disappointing. Um, you know, maybe if he'd come with some cue cards or something, he could have held them up at least, and we could have, we could have read what he thought. Um, but you know, like I said, I can appreciate why he's done it, and and I understand that, you know, he's got, like I said, he's got frustrations. But from our point of view, we want to hear about. Of course. What's, you know, maybe frustrations for the fight that happened last time. Um, and, you know, you know, how happy is it the fight's been rescheduled? And, it's, you know, the, maybe the difference is about him coming down from London to maybe Manchester. You know, the differences in, you know, in preparations for this fight to last fight. That's, mm -hmm. what, you know, that's what the fans want to hear about. And hopefully we'll be able to grab him another opportunity. And, um, and, and you know, we'll... Maybe we get him on Cassius and Helder, um, you know, for an exclusive. That would, that would, that maybe that's the one we try and do. The disappointment of the first fight not happening has been spoke about enough. I don't really want to dwell on that too much. I want to look forward now. I said it's a massive card developing, isn't it? It is. Um, like Dad said, there's a press conference on Thursday to, to talk about the undercard. Excuse me. Um, so um, yeah, there's some real 50-50 pick and fights on there. Bradley Skeet had a great win at the weekend. Um, Bit obviously disappointing it wasn't for a full title at the weekend, but it looks like we, we might be able to um, do something for that. Um, so we'll be fighting for uh, a full title um, on the 29th of November. Everything looks to go, be going ahead for Billy Joe Saunders versus Chris Eubank Jr. Looks that way. Um, it's a massive fight there. Um, I think when I said to approach you in Liverpool a couple of weeks ago with yeah. Paul Butler at press conference, I said that there was a few fights developing. You did? And you I was. Did. I've done quite well not, not spilling the beans on that one. Was you quite tempted to, to mention that? It's like, <laughs> <laughs> ne nearly, yeah, nearly. <laughs> but yeah, because no, it's, it's, it's a top fight, it's a great fight, and one that has been talked about for, for, for a few years now. Um, you know, Billy Joe's probably had, um, you know, the, well, he's definitely had the tougher fights coming up um, and getting to the point where he is. I saw Billy on Saturday night, and he's absolutely raring to go for it. Chris has been doing his thing, doing it very well. Been sparring um, in the Mayweather gym in America as well. He's been over in the States doing, um, you know, getting obviously gaining invaluable experience in, in, over there in that gym. So the fight's got every ingredient um, for, 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 you know, for, to, to put on a good show for the fans. Do you think Team Eubank are very confident? Obviously, they, obviously they won't be putting him in if they don't think confident? he's ready Confident? I don't know, I've never seen a more confident lad in my life. <laughs> so. Uh, and you know, I suppose he's got every right to be if he believes in his own ability. Um, you know, he's done. He hasn't put a foot wrong yet. Yeah. Um, you know, so confident they don't even have to talk to each other in the corner in between rounds. <laughs> Do you think it's they a just... case of he's had such good sparring that they feel he's ready for a test up with Joe Saunders? Well, you hear about who he's sparred. You know, you've seen a video of him fighting, uh, sparring Carl Frotch, um, and you know he's, he's sparred with Cleverly, with Grove, with Gale, with you know. Uh, so you know, he's been, he's been in there with with the best. In and around his division, um, and it's almost like he's using the sparring as he's as he's learning, and 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 the fights as um, you know just maybe getting used to fighting in an arena. Mm. But I so, don't you know. So I mean, massive, massive test against Billy, and um, I know who I'm picking. But um, I know it's been interesting. You know, maybe you should do a poll. Just get 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 the Twitter going, James, and do a poll. Who think people are going to win? It's a good idea. It really is a good idea. It's probably not an original idea, but it's an idea. Yeah, you would have been original in 2004. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I'll live Ten that. years behind. What am I going to do? <laughs>
All right. Well, listen, looks like a great card, as I said. And do you know what I like today? Uh, your dad taking some responsibility for the build-up and what happened mm -hmm. during the first build-up. As I said, that was... That was a good shout by him, to be honest. It was, it was. And, you know, I just think it's going to be a great night. And, you know, fair play to my dad for managing to keep it to keep this fight together. Yeah. Um, it's um, it's not easy doing it, especially, you know, when the, when the, maybe the when the first one's postponed, it might, might take a bit, of a, a bit a bit of a gloss off of it. But it seems to, well, especially with the turnout today, it seems that, uh, you know, people are still fully behind it. And most importantly, you've got two guys out there who have come today and maybe... One's not as been as vocal as we'd like, but they're both here. They're both ready to fight, and off they go into camp and um, you know, may the best man win. I think it's the magnitude of the undercard as well that's really got people's attention, along with the main bill. You know, it's just it's a cracking card. I think when you when you're doing a big show down in London, there is so much going on in London, as everyone knows. You know, you've got you know, theatres and cinemas and gigs, and you know, there's so all the football. You know, there are many football clubs are in London, so to actually get people to to hand over their money to to, to come along to a, a boxing show, you've got to have a top, top card. And um, we've put a fantastic one together here. And hopefully it's going to be one that captures the public's imagination, and not just the main event or the chief support, but the rest of the card as well. Like I said, you've got Bradley Skeet, and I think those, Bradley and Frankie, they're going to hopefully we can get that to fight on. I think they both seem to want it. Um, Neil, I think, and I won't, I won't, I won't, I won't ruin Thursday's press conference. But you know, we've, we've got a few, you know, a few great fights on there. Right, it's going to be a great night. Right, well, listen, thank you for giving me some time today. I'm glad the press How's your show going? going? It's going all right. It's going all right. Yeah, a bit, right. bit strange seeing yourself on the telly. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> Takes a little getting used to, doesn't it? Do you know what I mean? That's it. I tell you, your Hatton interview was brilliant. Thanks, I mate. really enjoyed watching that, and um, I Thanks, thought, um, you know, great, great insight to to Mayweather's sort of. What people say Exciting. maybe is decline or, or all that sort of stuff. But Ricky said that you know what Ricky said was had a, had a, made a lot of sense. But you've got to be man, you've got to be a man there to ask the questions. I thought, Thanks, I thought you come across really well. Thanks, man. I said I can only thank Ricky for for indulging me. A little Kogan bit, was right? crap, but you were really good. <laughs> That's below the belt. Yeah. That's below the belt. Yeah. He, I just, he, the looked, he, he looked like he was really really enjoying himself in Vegas. He looked like a silhouette on the screen. Did what, you know? what about that woman though who come in and interrupted his like his his, his, his <laughs> goodbye to Vegas? <laughs> I great. think. I think she, uh, she, she looked like she needed a good lie down. That's great. Do you know what I like? Being video bombed by Mike Goodall last week, that was fun. <laughs> that was that was I think you've got to get some interviews with Mike. I, I bet it would be good value. I mean, the, story, the stories and tales he's got, I tell you what, you could do a whole hour long special on Mike Goodall. He told me Ringmaster. he's seen 65,000 live fights in 30 years. 65,000. He looks like he's been in a few as well. <laughs> <laughs> Top man. Thanks for watching. I'll catch Top you man. Again. Cheers, James. Cheers, mate. Best, mate.